This Bake and Draw episode is sponsored by Squarespace, the highly customizable website builder to create a professional portfolio or online shop, all in one place, all on your terms. Today, Steve and I will be talking about our opinions and experiences with art school as we bake some chocolate chip cookies for the holiday season. Here's a timestamp if you want to jump right into the topic. I'll also have some overlays of some art projects I've been working on, so I'll probably provide some like on-screen captions explaining as we talk, but for now, let's get to baking. Last bake and draw of the year. Yes. <laughs> Today we are doing a old recipe that I used to do all the time. I think I started to make it in 2018. I was probably still in high school, but it's Joshua Weissman's like perfect chocolate chip cookies. And that involves using a mix of different types of chocolate, using an egg yolk, all that great stuff. First, we're gonna start off with just chopping the chocolate. So, and the cookie part of this is really great because we're using dark brown sugar and we're browning the butter. The original recipe doesn't call to brown the butter, but I just personally like how that tastes because it's yummy. Okay. Oh, you're just weighing it for you. I'm just weighing it first. It's really good chocolate. The Ghirardelli chocolate and the lint chocolate mixed together, delicious. Yo, yo. What's your verdict? It's super bitter because that's how this percentage yeah, of dark chocolate 70, would be. Yeah. But it's not as bitter as the 95% you just <laughs> ripped cacao out of a tree and then licked it. Like, it's yeah, yummy. It's, this is better. Yeah, let's go with more of the 60%. Oh, we didn't talk about the aprons. <laughs> Boy, it's pretty fast, bear. <laughs> Since it's our bacon jaw, we need the proper attire. Is it an apron? Yes. What? <laughs> what? Yay! Oh my god, it's so high quality. Wait, I want to see. Oh, Yay. the red straps. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, let's show the camera. Yo. Look at that embroidery. Fazbear Entertainment. Thank you, Matt Pat. Yeah, this is Game Theory merch. What? Yeah. My very first Matthew Pathy merch. It looks so good. Yippee. Okay, I won't tie it yet. For my many FNAF themed goodies. With my beautiful wrapping skills. <laughs> yeah. Okay, destroy. Yes. Another game theory merch item. Yes. Oh, it's for you? Yeah, it was yeah, okay, for me. <laughs> The new aprons, we had the budget for it in this video. <laughs> Shout out Matt Pat from Game Theory. He doesn't know who I am, so. Yes. <laughs> Embroidered. And pizzeria is your favorite game. Do you think they would wear it in pizzeria? Of course. Yeah. Well, actually, pizzeria simulator. You don't actually make pizzas. You just no, but at least you're like you're running it. So yeah, we're fitting the it. part of like yeah. running it. It's Maybe not the kitchen. But. Yeah. So first day on the job. Yeah. A little nervous. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Square. Square. Awesome. Okay, so here's all our chocolate, and now we're gonna rough chop it. So mm. with, a, with a knife, very carefully. Okay. Sorry, this is so much better. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sixty is really good. I like to snack on 60% chocolate. The hard part about rough chopping, especially we live in Florida, so the chocolate's gonna just like continue to melt. I'll make it chocolate, of course. I'll make it chocolate, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it too fast? No, that, that was natural. Perfect. Yeah, that actually it simulated way too quickly. Okay, what I like to do is kind of like chop it in strips and then just oh. chop it again and make tiny little- strips. Yeah, sort of, but like I like big chunks of chocolate. Oh, okay, so, okay. So I'll show I'm you what I mean. Them. Okay, like, sure, you demonstrate. Knife. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want me to like you. this? Yeah. This has worked out for me best, especially when it starts to melt. That you just don't have all these scattered bits of chocolate everywhere, and yeah. then your hands are like the all chocolate. The shavings start to melt a lot quicker than the blocks do. Exactly. Yeah. See, this guy gets it. This guy gets it. And by this guy. Maybe. I wrote the recipe in my mini sketchbook. Oh, is it bingo winging on it? Bingo. There we go. Assist. Hands, I need hands. <laughs> okay, some of these aren't perfect, but that's fine because we're gonna eat them. So. We have these chopped, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna move these to a bowl, and then we can chop the squares as well. Okay. 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 Well. Yay! So you get these really nice, good chunks of chocolate. I'm gonna make a chocolate bowl. I wonder when the Willy Wonka movie comes out. It's like sometime around Christmas, right? Uh, definitely December, but I'm not sure when. Okay. I want to see Hugh Grant as an Oompa Loompa. Who's excited for Wonka? Crickets. I Absolutely am. Crickets. I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess these could be called like a chocolate chunk cookie. 
all the chocolate, which is now all over our hands. Okay, so now I have the chocolate. Now we're going to brown the butter. Have you ever browned butter before? No. It's no. fun and it's easy. You just gotta make sure you don't burn it. Okay. <laughs> so what we're gonna look for is like a honey color, kind of like more like amber-ish. So let's let's move over to the stove and do that. I typically do like a medium low heat to start off with, but I think you eventually bump it bump it up to a medium heat. So come on. Bada. Nice. Okay. It's almost there. Mm -hmm. Soup. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was thinking of drinking it was my like <laughs> intrusive thought. Yeah. I was like, oh, I wonder how bad and how viscous would that yep. be. It's straight butter, man. It may suck, yeah. Or it may slap. Who's to say? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. You see those brown bits at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Perfect. And it smells a lot uh, no, more nutty. Yep. Perfect. That looks really good. Yay! Step Beautiful. one, to, actually, step two, complete. <laughs> But before we jump into my conversation with Steve about art school and our experiences, I would like to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. So one of my biggest goals for 2024 is to build my comic and illustration portfolio and having a professional online presence is a part of that goal. And Squarespace's customizable portfolio templates have made it so much easier for me to get started with that goal right now and has made me more confident about my presentation as an artist online. With Squarespace's fluid engine design system, you can drag and drop images and text blocks anywhere you want to truly make the page your own. This ability makes it so much easier easier for me to visualize and plan how I want my site to look without learning any coding or complex software. In 2024, I'm also looking into building more passive income streams for my art and with Squarespace, you have the ability to sell digital products like brushes, tutorial content, and even add extensions for merch and make t-shirts, hoodies, and even mugs. So if you want to jumpstart your 2024 goals of finally compiling a professional portfolio and building your online art career, check out squarespace.com slash sketches of Shay to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using my code sketches of Shay. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel throughout 2023. And thank you to viewers like you for continuing to watch my videos, giving me the opportunity to get more sponsors like this and supporting my content and art. Now back to the video. To preface this conversation, both Stephen and I went to the University of Central Florida, which is a public university that is well known for its space program and cybersecurity program, but we went there for the art. I graduated about a year ago and received a BFA in studio art with a specialization in drawing and illustration. And I ended up kind of receiving a minor in painting because I accidentally took way too many painting classes. Steven received a BA in studio art and a minor in art history at UCF as well. But before going to UCF, he studied computer arts and animation at a local community college. And to be completely transparent, I was able to get pretty much all of my tuition paid for by earning the Bright Futures program for Florida high schoolers. The Bright Future Scholarship Program I think is based off of GPA and community service. If any of you are Florida high schoolers and looking for really great scholarship opportunities, it was really helpful with covering most of my tuition. Along with this, I applied to like 10 to 20 different scholarships pertaining to my portfolio and grades, and I was able to earn some extra money to save for books, art supplies, and housing. And on top of this, I was also privileged enough to have some money saved by my family that I could use as well. But due to the scholarships and like Bright Futures, I luckily I didn't have to tap too much into this. So I know that money is a huge topic when we talk about higher education, especially for my fellow Americans. So I wanted to make it clear clear what my situation was financially, how that influenced my choices, and how I was able to pay for all of this. Did we determine that art school is typically a private school? Like private art school that's mainly centered around the arts and like arts fields? I think it's safe to define it as that because I don't think that the term art school really has like a legal definition. Yeah. I think it's more just uh, students naming a school or an institution an art school because that's their main 
focus mm-hmm. or like what they're pri- primarily centering their like majors and tracks around uh-huh. are like things in the in the visual arts or the performing arts whatever type of art school i guess it okay. is um so i don't know if you want to name drop examples that we're thinking of that would um, be even like I feel like that would be schools like Ringling. Yeah, SCAD. 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 Um, psych. CalArts, Psych. RISD? Did we say RISD already? No, I don't think you did. Okay. I think those are all like strong examples yeah. of what we like widely accept as art school. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's important even having to establish that before we continue with the conversation because I think that there are plenty of public universities that have a major or a track that is pertaining to a visual art or something, you know, artsy Mm -hmm. that can turn your experience in that university into like that is your art school experience like everyone that is within that major track is in a very similar mindset and like curriculum to you yeah so technically your curriculum is being curated to the arts but you're not necessarily at an art school you just Mm -hmm. found this niche within a school that provides much broader subjects than only art Mm -hmm. so i think that that lends itself to feeling like you can make any school experience into an art school experience if they have that major that you're looking for or that specialization track make your own (laughs) art school was the friends you made along the way and you can make (laughs) your own uh experience to that without having to uh i guess pay the higher tuition of a private institution that does call themselves an art school or does only have this like exclusive range of majors Mm -hmm. so we technically didn't go to an art school then I guess technically, no, because it was a public university Mm -hmm. and we could actually afford to go to it. (laughs) And um, I think although we had like portfolio reviews and there was plenty of what I would call like check ins, like on your uh, the quality of your education there and the skills that you came into it with. um, I guess it just wouldn't be called an art school because there were so many other things that Mm -hmm. lie beyond uh, the just the art field, I guess, no yeah. matter how broad that is, there were so many other major tracks that could have been options for us if that was like something that we had in line or that we were in line for. Mm-hmm. Um, but we weren't. <laughs> we were in it for illustration, we were in it for studio art, we were in it for painting. Yeah, but I feel like a lot of like what we established to be like art schools, they have mm-hmm. you get that more, a little bit more well rounded education before going into your like main major. Yeah. But Everyone I feel like, AA. yeah, yeah. But um, I feel like with theirs, it's more like concentrated and focused, mm-hmm. possibly. Would you say, because I only did like two tours at institutions that were like, those are art schools. Mm-hmm. Um, would you say that those are more like career driven? Like there's always an end goal in sight and that's one of their selling points? I think... I, um, yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think that's why so many people, the idea of going to an art school is a lot more comforting of an mm-hmm. idea, especially in this day and age where like right. getting a job is like hard across the board. Mm-hmm. But that idea that there will be more professional connections and opportunities to try and get internships or mm-hmm. to just like talk to people and mm-hmm. like network network and, yeah. yeah and um yeah i think that's like one of the main selling points of the school is that you maybe have a better chance of getting like an arts right. focused job but i feel like nowadays it's like it's even hard for people who are already well established in their career to find work these mm-hmm. days so i feel like even that argument is a getting a little shaky nowadays yeah Yeah. i mean you're still able to make like really great connections with people Mm -hmm. but i feel like the the probability i don't know i can't i feel like i can't really like say that for certain because like i don't i didn't go to an art school and i feel like i've just heard so many stories of it being hard across the board right now like Mm -hmm. different um people talking about that online but yeah I feel like one of the main driving points is a career, but that doesn't seem as certain even now. Yeah. So what do they have going for them at this point? (sighs) If it's so hard to like pay the tuition and to even be guaranteed a job. I guess a more rigorous education. Sure. More like specified to what you want to do. So Mm -hmm. like maybe you really want to do like game art or like Mm -hmm. modeling skills and stuff like that. There would be more um, rigorous education hopefully bring you to like a better point in your skills and your portfolio to I guess once again lead back into get a a, a better job or more potential of getting a job. So I guess you should go into it now. Like if you were someone who is 
you know, applying to an art school and you had full intentions of like paying that tuition, going through the whole curriculum they have in mind for you, knowing that it may have been advertised as a guaranteed way to like network and be, sec- you know, secure a job in that field mm-hmm. that you're studying in. But it would be healthier for you and more realistic to think like, okay, I just need to make sure I'm putting all of the work that I possibly can in as much out of this curriculum as possible yep, yep. and know that no one else is going to do that networking for me. It's yes. almost entirely up to me now yeah. to like make those connections mm-hmm. and to, you know, polish that portfolio, like make yes. sure that it's as important to you as it's important to like the people asking you to have a portfolio. Mm-hmm. So I think that it... Uh, you need a lot of like um you need to be able to like self drive yourself yeah to, to do those things yeah i think that's what like a big misconception is that mm-hmm. you can go to like the fancy art school or something like that but mm-hmm. it's really your portfolio and your skills and like mm-hmm. you as an artist that's gonna get you your job or all that kind of stuff but then people will say like if you just know the right person you'll like yeah, get a job just, that like, way totally nepotism and it's yeah. not even just in the art field but yeah i can see that interfering with mm-hmm. your chances if someone else like knew a guy yeah um yeah i feel like portfolio is the biggest mm-hmm. in all of this the biggest factor but it's just like the price the price is so it's so high yeah like when we were applying for schools Mm -hmm. um i think i remember it being like forty thousand dollars a year or something like that i don't think it was like a semester i think it was like a whole year which for like four years that's yeah that's that's really bad you've never gone to college before who's to say like did you have a part-time for a year where you only saved money for an entire year like it's impossible to ask for that tall of an order for someone who is just starting college Mm -hmm. like i'm sure that you had other priorities or reasons to save how can i give you all this money in a year like it's it's just a tall order yeah and i feel like even okay i did go to the ringling pre-college program Mm -hmm. like the the summer before my senior year which was it was it was still kind of expensive but it was a way less a price to just like try something out like a college which i really recommend if you could just like i know a lot of colleges have that like pre-college program where you could try it out and see if it'll work Mm -hmm. i tried it out i mean it was cool i met a lot of cool people but i was just like the I don't think I could like stomach paying mm. this much to go to school. Um, but that was just my personal preference. Mm. Um, where was I going? I can't remember what we were talking about. Connected to the pre college program? Pre college, the price, saving up money. The networking, you're not guaranteed a oh, career. Okay, yeah. So it's not even like you're not guaranteed a career, but the arts careers, like industry careers, they don't generally pay that well for entry level like artists with not that much experience so it's like oh this is why i was connected back to pre-college okay i had a professor in one of my like pre-college classes this was like for like a month-long thing and he said i think he said in his 40s he went well okay he went to ringling Mm -hmm. but like just now in like his 40s like recently he like just paid everything off or something like that yeah but like when he went to school it was probably like maybe ten thousand dollars less possibly Ah. um so yeah i just always had that in mind like that was like such an important thing for him to say Mm -hmm. and i really appreciated that because he was just like yeah it's a really great school but like it took me so long to pay off that debt Mm -hmm. and that just seemed like really scary and i was just like yeah yeah, um i don't have that kind of money and (laughs) i'd rather like be scrappy a little bit more scrappy with your education and kind of like find your own way and just try and make it work and just make art the priority and if like art doesn't become a career it's okay but at least like i didn't like dump a whole bunch of money yeah yeah Yeah. exactly oh i can see how that would like scare you yeah that would be um a huge deterrent for me if i got like a first-hand example of how horrible that could like affect Mm -hmm. the rest of my uh you know money consciousness or conscientiousness that would yeah Yeah. i could see why you made that decision and um i really didn't have a lot of one-on-ones with like professors from Ringling or from SCAD, those were like the only two schools that I did tours at. I didn't do any pre-college programs like that, um, but I did like have an interview with someone at Ringling. Yes. Where yeah. I think like she had said very encouraging things in terms of like just just about study as a, as a whole, where I was like, oh, I'm young and that's something I haven't heard before. I like this perspective and I just gained something even just from an interview with someone there. Mm-hmm. But then the end of that interview starting to talk about like the monetary responsibilities Mm -hmm. that you would be given and i was so young and i was like i don't think i could do that no Mm -hmm. matter like how hard i tried for scholarships 
or like any grants or I just don't think it would be enough to have it's, covered yeah, the, no. you know, the, the receipt at the end yeah. of the day. So it's just, it's very morale killing when yes. you're excited about a school that seems to have a lot of potential and a lot of specially curated, you know, courses for you to take mm -hmm. where you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen any of these courses at any other schools. Yeah. That's, I think, where I feel like, not deprived, but that I did miss out on that like special attention mm -hmm. that you could be receiving in this mm -hmm. field that you're so passionate about. But sometimes you get very lucky and I feel very lucky having gone to this public university and finding like our printmaking professor, yep. our bookbinding professor. Like there were so mm -hmm. many people that were passionate about what they did. And although they weren't at a private institution, they were still like as passionate as a professor there yep. would have been. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, like it really is about what you take from it and not yep. about what you're given. So I think you can learn in either of those environments and still feel like enriched in your field mm -hmm. um, and have made the networks like just maybe not with the same people, but with the same like passion in mind. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good takeaway because it's kind of like what you make of it, mm -hmm. because I think if college taught me anything, it's like a lot of self advocacy mm -hmm. and like going out of your way to do that's a things. Great term going out of your way to like ask questions, um, yeah. get the resources you need. And a lot of the times, all that money that you're putting into college is into like the quote free resources you're getting, yeah. but you're paying for it yeah. actually. So like that going to the sense. library, checking out art books, mm -hmm. um, using the, the materials in your like open studio times. That's like so valuable. Like I miss that so much mm -hmm. from school. And we just went to a public university and it wasn't until like my last year in school well, we kind of like suffered from COVID and yeah. didn't get back to actual physical classes until like 2021, like mm -hmm. fall 2021. Yeah, pretty late. So we kind of like suffered a bit from that, but it was only till like my last year in college when I finally capitalized on mm -hmm, all the free mm -hmm. resources and I was just bugging my professors all the time, asking them so many questions, yeah. especially since so many of the professors were actual working artists right so they had a lot of like real world knowledge and i got so much like not just like art advice but business advice yes. as well because that's really important i think if i would have gone back and done anything differently i would have gotten like a business minor i feel like that okay. would have been so smart i feel like that's like you don't realize you need it until the very end you're like oh shoot how am i gonna do all these this financing yeah. skills and like yeah because even with like industry jobs most mm. of the time that's contract work so they're gonna give you money but you're gonna have to like take away money for taxes mm -hmm. and like all your retirement planning stuff so i feel like that'd be a really smart move i mean uh, there's also resources online to try and learn business stuff yeah. and like asking people questions and consulting but yeah that'd be really valuable like a non-art thing if you were going to like a public university that offered that sort of thing That'd be a great addition to your education. Yeah, I'm sure that there's external guidance to be sought out in terms mm -hmm. of these things that you weren't taught while you were majoring in studio art. Like mm -hmm. you weren't being taught long term about your long term responsibilities if yeah. art was going to become your career yeah. and you were self employed. Yeah, they don't really necessarily teach you those things off the bat. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm sure there are like online courses and people you could consult like after the networking and knowing those professors, they would yeah. still be, uh, hopefully still be willing to communicate with you as an alumni. And like, yes. yeah. that is part mm -hmm. of the networking is reaching back to the people who taught yep. you previously. Mm -hmm. um, and I almost, I want to mention like that you can still pursue an artistic career within a timeline that doesn't include studying it in yeah. college, even at all, I would yep. say, which like, I did, and I, I definitely do value having had that education curated to what I'm interested in. But I think that if I had majored in something that was not studio art and wasn't art history, it was just something else that I could like, you know, pursue a career in a little bit more by conventional standards, by like conventional means of getting a job right away, mm -hmm. um, that I would still be able to study art like on the side yeah. or maybe not at like the same pace as I did, mm -hmm. but it would still be something that was present in my consciousness and... I could return to someday if I exactly. did want to study it. And like, I'm sure you've talked about before, like, you know, publicly and everything about um, taking online art classes yes, and those kind of things. That, you can do that yes. on an individual basis. And mm -hmm. it's not always a part of like the a tuition, basically. Yes, like yeah. it's not a huge, uh, um, it doesn't need to be a commitment to a degree. It could be a certification. Mm -hmm. It could be an individual, like an independent study that yep. doesn't have a... Um, 
uh, a set of professors or assignments necessarily attached to it. Yep. I still think that, that it's like a broader conversation saying that you could still call yourself an artist even with no technical knowledge. Yes, Like that's definitely. something that is so personal to you and like driven by your creative motivations and mm-hmm. not necessarily your technical skill. Yeah. So this whole like conversation we're having about even going to art school at all could be brought back to like, yeah. did you even need to go to yeah, a school? Like it's exactly. just, yeah. And with like so many online learning resources now that are mm-hmm. like so much cheaper in comparison, like yeah. you could, maybe you get like a, a stipend each semester mm-hmm. and you're studying something other than art. That's like your main major. Maybe you could use like that leftover money to like take a online art class in the summer or something mm-hmm. like that. I took a bunch of um, online like classes from uh, like different websites, and then also like Skillshare has been helpful more recently. By the way, my current favorite Skillshare class is Phil Jimenez's "The Art of Visual Storytelling: How Comics Work" class. I'm using it to brush up on some comic skills that I want to focus on for 2024 and you can join me using my affiliate link to get one month free of learning. I get a small commission off of every sign up so it helps me a little while you get free art classes. But there's like if you look up there's so many like art uh, more in-depth like courses and classes for such a reduced price compared to like a traditional university Mm -hmm. and with that a lot of times you can get one-on-one like discussions with a working professional which can be super helpful. Yeah, mentorship yeah. beyond Mentorship, the... I feel like, is probably the best way to go if you're going to do, like, a solo route. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I feel like there's so many great alternative things. And I would say even with going to a public university with a, like, focus in, like, art or the, the BFA major that I received. I feel like I got so many, like, questions answered and learned so many art skills growing up just from YouTube. Mm-hmm. Just watching YouTube videos, watching it from, like, working professionals or just people who do it on the side that just mm-hmm. had amazing artwork and they just were passionate about it. I feel like YouTube is such a great resource and um, you could like practically like learn anything from youtube Mm -hmm. i'd say it's a good technical resource from people like content creators who would be providing like tutorials and you know educational services like that but then also just like from an inspirational standpoint you'd be like oh like maybe someday i would get into content creation or you like this medium that someone's using and you want to start experimenting with it there's so many different like outlets of expression on youtube Mm -hmm. that like you're seeing people teaching others and also inspiring others and then something i wanted to mention it was you were talking about your experience at a public university and having all these professors that are very, uh, you know, involved in their field of art that you're studying as well as a yeah. student, but also like have a career that they're um, maintaining outside of their professor, their career as a professor. Um, and you talked about like wanting to capitalize on them being available to you and like you're paying for their for that yes. class and you're paying for these resources mm-hmm. like at the library and everything. And I think that for a lot of people or students specifically in that position find that they have to jump like a mental hurdle of feeling embarrassed to ask for that type of help or to like to utilize the things that mm-hmm. are readily available to them. Yeah. And I, like... I want to try and think about how to lessen that embarrassment mm-hmm. or that like level of anxiety in like going going further than raising your hand, going further than uh, just sitting in class, like going to office hours yeah. or going to the library when you weren't already being guided with the rest of your class at the mm-hmm. library. Like kind of taking that extra step to pursue, like to continue pursuing your education outside of the hours of your class or outside of the hours of you doing an assignment. I think that takes a lot of mental strength to start doing it does yeah yeah and you have to i think want to like help yourself in that yep. in that circumstance i i think it's really scary at first coming mm-hmm. from experience because it's always been a struggle to be like social and mm-hmm. to like advocate for myself exactly. but i feel like once you start to do it and you just like visit like professors like just like hey i art is really important to me i'm really mm-hmm. passionate i see that you're like really um knowledgeable knowledgeable you have experience um and just like asking them questions and kind of building up that relationship Mm -hmm. of sorts and it becomes a lot easier and more casual because professors yes there is like kind of like a hierarchy Mm -hmm. because they are like and you need to respect like a boundary between student and teacher yeah but like it's really just like a 
but they're there to help. Yeah. The whole yeah. point is that they can offer they as want, many of their resources within like this position as possible. Yeah, they want people to visit them. Or at right. least like the professors I worked with. They were like they're <laughs> okay. nice, they're encouraging. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just like came across as an art nerd and they thought it was like endearing or something mm-hmm. like that. But I think it's ultimately it's not fun to hear, but it's kind of just like getting over that sort of like mm-hmm. mental hurdle of feeling like you're bothering people mm-hmm. when it's like actually their job I think, and you're yeah. supposed to um kind of just advocate yourself and it's like your artwork and like you really want to make sure you can like learn as much as mm-hmm. you can and like that's your money and you really want to like get the most out of it and mm-hmm. your money is so valuable especially like during these times so uh, it's just so good to like reach out to those professors and talk to them because i feel like yes in class i learned a lot but i feel like i learned so much more from getting like one-on-one consultation and time with professors mm-hmm. kind of like mini critique sessions and yeah and then because you built that relationship it's so much easier to go to them even if you don't have a class with them and they'd be more like receptive to helping you and i don't know just helping you in the future so Mm -hmm. but you talked about um there being like a like you don't even have to go to art school to like or like take any like art major on or you could just like get like a major in like the sciences or like the sure. math or something like that well, you're, you're not and given then, like an intermediate yeah uh, pa- painting class or like something yeah, yeah. um so i also want to say like there's no specific timeline i think you mentioned the word timeline yeah. there's no specific timeline to any of this because i feel like with social media you see so many people who are like teenagers like 18 or 19 in their bio or like even like early 20s and it seems like they already have such a cohesive style they have like a bunch of great pieces and it seems like you might be falling behind or you're not matching like the standards of your age like you may have like a specific skill level in mind for that age and i feel like that's kind of like a myth where like everyone's on their own path and there's no one right path for anyone or like no like skill level or whatever type of art you have to be making at a certain age and i feel like that stops so many people from continuing art because Mm -hmm. they realize oh maybe i'm already so far behind or maybe i didn't study like the right classes in college or didn't pick the right things or didn't take the right opportunities and i feel like it's never too late to like continue it's never too late to start and it's never too like doomed to continue your art because it's so valuable and no one else is gonna make the art that you're gonna make tldr tldr um it's your choice if you decide to go to to school It's also sometimes not your choice because there may have been like monetary factors that prevent Mm -hmm. you from going to a school that you just cannot afford to go to. Mm -hmm. It's a huge privilege to be able to get a higher education and is also completely subjective to consider a formal education as being a higher one in the first place because you can totally learn anything from any walk of life um, outside of a classroom and outside of a curriculum. So I think one of the main takeaways is that so many things that we perceive to be as the standard are completely concocted mm-hmm. in like a fictional yep like it just it's just it's not real it is completely incorporeal mm-hmm. put yourself into a rub or put your art into a rubric is very limiting mm-hmm. i think that there are great things that come from that when you're studying and you're trying really hard to be successful in representation and in technical skills i like admire so much about that I just think that you should not always come from a place of having to be at that standard just yeah. to, to just to be considered an artist or yeah. just to like feel motivated to create mm-hmm. art. So something that you've mentioned often is like preserving that authenticity in your art making. And I think that has to come always hand in hand with like studying technical aspects of art mm-hmm. and just making sure that you still kept your like love alive yep. in the midst of on, being on that grind yeah. to like study things in its, you know, structured form yep so and those are our thoughts on art school i hope you may have found this comforting or insightful i really appreciated my time at ucf the friends i made and the faculty i spoke to and learned so much from and just having the privilege of spending time devoted to my artwork and getting better and just having that that space to explore things and I know that higher education can be a really great way to learn from professionals and build in-person connections in the art industry and 
the art world and find lifelong friends. But with the internet and alternative online learning, you can pretty much do the same thing. I think I learned most of my technical art skills from YouTube and it definitely provided a strong foundation for real world classes and assignments. I feel like with the, the deep dive into the art YouTube space when I was in high school and even in middle school, learning from so many different artists who are already established in their fields was so key to me understanding what I wanted to do and just gave me a lot of room to experiment and just practice my skills. I feel like it's never too late to go back and learn and pursue a career or just build your portfolio on your own. I'm even thinking about possibly taking some online classes in the future to learn more about animation since I didn't study that in school and other technical things. And I think it's really your portfolio is what's gonna make you hireable in the industry. And there's so many great creators on YouTube who are working professionals and have experiences in their field that offer so much valuable information and feedback for free on their channels. I'll have links to these videos and channels that I've used in the past and currently use as I work on my portfolio down in the description below. I mentioned um, Kaysem before, but Kaysem's a great example. He, I believe he like quit art school and majored in something else unrelated to art, but later down the line, he went back to art and proved his skills on his own and self-paced learning and is pretty much now a working professional so it's definitely possible to go a it's definitely possible to kind of pave your own way through um, arts education and ultimately I don't want to tell you that you should or shouldn't go to a traditional art school I just want you to know that there are options and above all I just want you to feel good about your education path that's what matters and you shouldn't feel pressured to take one path because it's what everyone else is doing and if that path is going to a traditional art school that's great or if it's taking online art classes, finding a mentor, or studying something else along with doing art on the side, that's also great. There, I don't think there's any rush to get through your education and we're always gonna be learning and growing and there are no wrong options. It's just making the most of whatever you end up pursuing and make it worth it to yourself and your artwork. All right, I didn't mean to get preachy towards the end. I just wanted to explain how I feel. I feel like the arts education landscape is changing so much with the internet and I just wanted to offer my two cents on the topic to anyone who wanted to hear. Thank you again to Steve for joining me for this video and offering his insight on the topic. Fun fact, we actually met in one of our art classes at UCF and bonded over Hannibal, so. Those some pretty good times. You can see his artwork on his Instagram at Nauseous Dog. And another thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A reminder to check out squarespace.com slash sketches of Shay to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using my code sketches of Shay. And thank you all so much for almost 70,000 subscribers as I'm writing this script. I had a YouTube short like pop off and it gained me like 10,000 new subscribers. So hello to all the newcomers. Welcome to my channel and thank you for watching my videos. I'm kind of holding off to write my full thanks in my last video of this year, um, which isn't this video. I have a next video coming up, but TLDR, this is crazy. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. And the biggest thank you to my Kofi members for sticking around as I make my move to Patreon. I'll be reopening my member tiers at the beginning of next year and hopefully introducing a Discord channel that Steven has been developing. But until then, shout out to my Sticker Club members. Agul, Air, Alex, Alien Kid, Elisa R, Anna's Confused, Artist Life 03, Aster, August, Bean, Bison Berries, Blue Swanson, Brendog, Kaylin D, Canid Courier, Charu, Cheyenne, Chloe, Chloe, Claude, Clowny Guts, Clutter of Chaos, Connor Mischief, Daisy S, Dara, Dossie, Demon Sketchnin, Emmy, Emily C, Emily B, Emma, Erisu Stuff, Evangelily, Froggy Bells, Gabriella C, Gamut Girl, Ghost Pup, Grace, Har Har Har, Heather C, Hen, Impicorous, Ink Palette, Izzy, Jason, Jacob, Cubs, Jazz, Jordan, Jules, Julie, Junos, K.L., Cam's Art World, Katie Kent, Kia KP, Chris, James, Seams, Creates, Laura C., Leslie, Liesel, Liz, Lucas S., Lux, Mads, Mar, Max Decided, Mayday V, Mayo, Mika Lika, Ms., Moth, Mr. Goat Was Here, Maya, Napkin, Nat, Nishi, Olive, Olivia, Opal Cider, Peep Mart, Pierce, Pilot, Pixie Boo, Purpies Cave, Re Rachel, Ratchack, Red, Reggie, Ren, Roses Are Purple, Rowan, Ruby T, Rin, Seiche, Salem, Salty Goober, Sam, Serensley, Scotty, Screaming Rat, Scribble and Dibble, Shay, 
Chano Sueno, Shelf Cat, Sir Night Star, Steven C, Stinky Gato, Zotch, Tiramisu, That Gay Taku Boy, Toby, Ugly Sketchbook, Vampy Ajax, Box, Witzler, Zatheka, Zelly, and Zio JK7. And shout out to my Snickerdoodle members. Big Chungus, Bloomy and Moon, by Leia Gracie, Carrie, Chipu, Clarice, Cup of Honey, Deandria, Day on the Cow, Aaron, G7, King Me, King Me, Government Flu, Iris, Catherine F, Kelly E, Kobe Supporter, Lexan A, Lily Bell, Mango Dust, Nicole Nader Art, Peach, Peachy Pie Peeps, Rin Kenobi, Ronan L, Soft Lesbian, Star Gamer, Tammy, Tasty, Bas Tasty Battery Acid, Deforic, Tyfler, Vixen, and Valency. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in next week's video. Take care and have a good weekend. Bye.